Thursday, November 23rd, tip of the Grant's Sound Advice Coffee Cup to you. And uh, just a little nod that uh, I went and gave blood this morning. So uh, if you have a chance to do that, especially during the holidays, uh, that's a great thing to do. I want to talk this morning. This is episode 21 of Getting Started in VoiceOver for Tech Tuesday, right? It's uh, Tech Tuesday, right? There it is. It says so. Um, it's not so much a retraction as it is a re as a correction and maybe clearing up under misunderstanding. This is going back to episodes one and two and maybe even three. Uh, episode one was about recording my space, my recording space. Episode two was more in your recording space and episode three, help evaluating your recording space. And I had the opportunity, um, the gentleman that I took voiceover coaching when I first got back in the business, Dan Pop from uh, Color Studio in Akron, Ohio, has some really great articles that I will reference in um, the comments on his podcast on creating space and some other really good stuff. It's, it's worth a listen for sure. And so one of the things um, that I re-listened to and then realized I didn't give you bad information. I may not have given you enough information. And again, this is episodes one through three. Um, episode two was July 6th. If you want to go back, I don't know how you can find that on YouTube, but you'll find it, I'm sure. So the question becomes, what do I do about recording space? And the thing I want to kind of clear up is I talked about using a closet. I talked about using a laundry basket. I know someone that is now at a six-figure income, and that's how they started. I don't know how long they were there, but they recorded in that laundry basket for a long time. Go back and listen to episode two. Um, Dan talks about, and, we, and I talked also then about doing a hobo fort. And I talked about how many, I know a guy that six-figure income now in voiceover, this started with a hobo fort. The challenge is a hobo fort can only do so much. And for those of you who don't, don't know, it's a PVC frame that you've built inside of another room and you've hung heavy blankets, comforters, uh, moving blankets are very popular. Uh, you can also go to the uh, thrift store and buy a bunch of comforters cheaper and they do just about as much if not a little bit more they're a little heavier anyhow I built one inside of this same room I'm in right now and I, it it did almost nothing to mitigate sound I was up against a wall there was a lot of bad stuff there so it's not a magic bullet but if you can quiet things uh, the same guy I'm talking to uh, talking about that started his six-figure income in that uh, for a while he was recording really close to a refrigerator and couldn't ref figure out what the name the noise was so those are the things you run into when you're new and you're trying to figure it out and there's usually um, there's always stuff like that there just is so th the little bit better info one of the things that is very popular is recording in a closet and one of the things that Dan spoke to personally to me was when I realized the hobo fort wasn't working, I have a smaller room. It's about eight by eight for, for all intents and purposes. It's a room right off of where you walk in the door. It has two outside walls. One has a window in it. Not a bad space at all, but I it didn't have a fourth wall. Uh, it was right when you walk in the door and there's the room. I would have had to have built a fourth wall. And Dan reminded me that a bigger space is actually easier to treat. If you stand five feet from me, I can talk in this voice and you can hear me. If you stand at the other end of a football field, not so much. If you just hear your own voice, maybe, if at all. The point is that sound dies after a place. Sound is energy. It's a waveform. And the further you are from any way to bounce that back at you, the further you are to attenuating that sound. In other words, cutting it. Again, like I told you back then, you will not soundproof, more than likely, you will not soundproof a space with your budget. It just doesn't happen. Um, it, it just doesn't happen. Sound attenuation means how can you knock sound down and keep it from traveling? That, that I think, I'm going to hopefully give you good information here. It's the stopping it from traveling. 
And that's what I finally did in this room. I built some panels, and I will try to remember to post a picture right about now of what the sound panels look like. And uh, that's what they look like if I was able to uh, put the panel up. Uh, they're made from rock wool, which you can get at Home Depot. They're made with little one by two furring strips. And I used landscape fabric to cover them. Now, landscape fabric is um, it's the stuff you put on the ground for weeds. But the thing is, it's nearly transparent sound-wise. If you built the wrong sound panel and put a really hard fabric like a uh, thicker vinyl or something like that. It's not going to do anything. The sound's just going to bounce off of it. You want the sound to go into that panel and be confused for a moment before it comes out the other side. In other words, it's going to go through and go, whoa, it just screwed me down. And so now that sound wave has, it's taking the energy out of that energetic sound wave. If I went and recorded in my living room right now, you'd hear the difference. There's no sound attenuation there at all. So the slight retraction correction, and I'll give you links um, to Dan's podcasts. I hope you go listen to them. They're excellent. And just remember that when I talk about a closet, I'm not talking about uh, like I have an older house and the closets are, are literally this, this, they're just not big. And that's not really what I'm talking about. However, if you had a spare closet like that and filled that full of blankets, out a little bit like a, a halfway hobo fort and then put your mic facing into that and sat behind that um, that's where that that echo would come from uh, my mic is right here and it's facing me and because it's facing me it it works harder to pick up sound behind it so Sounds like a little bird flying around. But you can tell when I got to the back of the mic, less sound travels in that way. It's just not facing that way. So think about that. And hopefully this helps you. Hopefully I didn't confuse you. Hopefully I didn't uh, run you down the road too far. It wasn't bad information, but it maybe it wasn't as good as it could have been. So anyhow, that is Sound Advice 21 on getting started in voiceover. I hope this helped. Uh, feel free to drop comments or questions in the bottom. And if I can help you get started, voicepro at grantsvoice.com. Have a great Tuesday.